President Biden's pro-police message from Tuesday may have the opposite effect. Listen. When it comes to public safety in this nation, the answer is not defund the police. It's fund the police. For too long, too many families haven't had that peace of mind. They watch the news and they see kids being gunned down in schools and on the streets. They just want to feel safe again. They want to feel a sense of security. And that's what my crime plan is all about. Joe Gamaldi, the National Vice President for Fraternal Order of Police, joins me now. Joe, thanks for being with us. You know, in this, um, there was a headline in an op-ed. It said Biden can't make a pro-police speech without attacking police. It said if Biden's speech was to bolster police, it surely had the opposite effect. So basically saying, you know, there's some pretty bad apples out there in the police department. So my question to you is, instead of him going back and forth, which he has on whether he wants to fund the police or defund the police. Wouldn't it be a better avenue to go to say, hey, you know what, instead of lowering the standards to get into the academy, we're going to make it tougher, but we're also going to pay you more. And that way we won't have the people on the street wondering if they're going to be the next person who's attacked. And the police at the same time will feel like they're being backed by their president and their city and state. Yeah, well, you know, a recent Gallup poll said that 80% of Americans are worried about crime, which is the highest number in years. So it's not surprising to see the Democrats and the president now suddenly wanting to support law enforcement. But what the rank and file really want to hear is full-throated support for the brave men and women of law enforcement. Stop the harmful rhetoric towards us and certainly condemn the historic violence to the tune of 230 police officers shot already this year. And if the Democrats really want to support law enforcement, they control the House and Senate, pass the protect and serve act, which would make it a federal crime to assault a police officer. And if President Biden wants to talk about crime, particularly while he was in Philadelphia, which just had their highest murder rate in recorded history last year, we got to talk about the walking disaster that is DA Larry Krasner. Him and his minions have let criminals take over that city, all in pursuit of their revolving door agenda, which is just perverse in and of itself. So if President Biden really wants to help, why don't we call on Larry Krasner and all the other good-for-nothing rogue DAs in this country to do their damn job? Right, and then when you look at crime in major U.S. cities, Chicago, it's up 37 percent, L.A. 11.2, San Francisco 7.8. This one, I mean, this is startling. New York City 35.7, you know, and the list goes on and on. So when you see these numbers, what should the message have been from Biden? What should have been the first thing he went to if he does truly support backing the blue? Well, I think it was very clear. He should have came out and said, we need to support the hardworking men and women of law enforcement, particularly when they're doing their job within policy, training, and the law. If we get something wrong and we do something wrong, we should be held accountable. But when we are experiencing the highest murder rate in, in the last 30 years in America last year, we had 16 American cities experience their highest murder rate on record, and you're giving speeches about crime, but you're not mentioning rogue DAs who are allowing people out over and over again, or these activist judges who are giving you know, pinky promise PR bonds to violent criminals. That is driving our violent crime rate in this country, particularly in our minority communities who are disproportionately impacted by violent crime to 12 times the homicide rate for black Americans versus everyone else. It needs to stop. And that should have been the message. Right. And let's get to this. A CNN reporter warned Biden's pro-police message could cost him support. Listen to this. Democrats have to weigh how much they want to center this law and order message. They want to be on offense on this issue. They run the risk of alienating some of their voters. They are not going to get the, you know, so-called back the blue folks. They're just not going to get those voters. And I think speeches like this are an appeal to try to call in that group. But at the same time, there is a reform-minded wing of the Democratic Party. And so he has to strike the right balance, I think, in these uh, speeches and not uh, doing too much to distance himself from, from those folks. You know, I think this is dangerous, Joe, because uh, last time I checked, police don't stop and ask someone what their political affiliation is before they decide if they're going to help you or not. So when did this become a, a Democrat versus Republican issue? <laughs> well, you know, is there anybody more out of touch with everyday Americans than the talking heads at CNN? Well, maybe writers at the New York Times. But this genius at CNN is saying that it's going to alienate voters to talk about law and order when we're talking about America having their highest murder rate in 30 years, as we talked about. When we have people being murdered every day in our streets to the tune of thousands 
thousands of more people than we have in years past. And this person has the audacity and arrogance to say that talking about law and order is going to alienate voters. You know, I'm out on the streets every day and I'm patrolling and I talk to people in our community, everyday Americans. They want safe streets. They want their kids to be safe. They want their businesses to thrive. And I'm telling you right now, there is going to be a reckoning at the ballot box for any idiot that doesn't support law and order or thinks it's going to alienate someone. Yeah, you know, we had a Democrat on the show yesterday we talked to and crime was his number one reason why he was voting for Lee Zeldin instead of Kathy Hochul. So if they think that this is a partisan or I'm sorry, a Republican or Democrat issue, it is not. People are genuinely worried about their safety these days. Joe Gamaldi, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.